God started the ministry. You know, he gave Jeff the vision. He gave him the want to. You knew every time you talked to him, he knew God was drawing him to start this church. Hello and welcome to You Matter, a Spring Hills podcast. I'm Josh Meyer. We're so grateful for you joining us today on our first Ministry Spotlight episode. Our Ministry Spotlight episodes give you the chance to get to know our former leaders and the current leaders of our church today. G.K. Chesterton was quoted as saying that every generation loses the path to life and every generation is charged with its recovery. One of the most powerful ways to see to it that the gospel is kept intact is to honor those who have come before you by valuing and seeking wisdom, as it says in Jeremiah 6, 16, where the Lord says, Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. Today, we are going to uncover some of the origin story of our church, how it began, and what has made it such a wonderful blessing to this day with our two of our founders, Mike and Anita Jones. Mike and Anita, how are you doing today? Doing good, thank you. Doing good, thank you. Awesome. Oh, it's so grateful. Just such a joy to have you here. And I'm super excited about this. This is probably one of the most important things that our church needs to know. It needs to know the story. Right. Story is so important. One of the things that I was talking with one of the other pastors the other day is how much we really enjoy the movie Star Wars. And we were talking about how story matters and how some of the greatest stories that have ever been told seem to borrow from the greatest story ever told. And we were talking about how uh, George Lucas actually was actually shared that his creation of the Star Wars story came from his Jewish background and that Anakin Skywalker actually represented in their Jewish tradition, the Jesus figure, yeah. that he was born of a virgin and was to be the chosen one, but not yet was the actual one in real life. And that Luke, his son, was still of the bloodline of David. So it's just amazing. It's so important that the power of story matters. And that's what we're after here today. So I'd like to lead off by asking you, can you tell us from your perspective of how our church got its start? Okay, I'd be happy to do that. I remember, um, I believe it was 1987, that um, our daughter Suzanne was going to church camp. And um, I went as a camp counselor, a children's counselor, and uh, Pastor Jeff was there as the pastor of the camp. And during one of his messages, he talked about uh, the fact that he had moved recently to Granville. And so uh, one evening, we always, in the evening, they always went up to Vespers Hill, which overlooks Seneca Lake. And that's where the camp was. And um, after the, after he had done devotions and the music and all of that, that evening, I went up and introduced myself and told him that we lived in Granville and we just got to talking. Uh, Pastor Jeff at that time was the evangelism director for the state of Ohio. And he said then that he, he just felt like that. As he walked around Granville, he felt like God was really wanting him to start an evangelistic church. And so we talked about that, and and, um, and we talked a few times, you know, other times uh, at camp. And then uh, later that year, in I believe it was in February, um, we were in charge of uh, the First Baptist Church in Heath, um, Valentine's Banquet. And I called and asked if Jeff would be our speaker. And, and he agreed, and he and Kathy came that evening, and we sat at the table with them. And again, that evening, he mentioned about feeling like God was calling him to start a church in Granville. And so that's kind of where that all started. And then um, that summer, you want to tell that part about in the summer? Uh, yeah, um, that summer, later on that summer, we were thinking more about it. I think the Lord was putting this thought in our mind. But uh, we were thinking about that Bible study that he might be wanting to start. So we talked about it, and we said we both would like to to do that. We would like to join that. So I called him up and and asked him if if he was going to have that Bible study. He said yes. And so he planned it for, I think, around August. And uh, we started it in his, him and Kathy, uh, Jeff and Kathy's house on... um, 
Loudon Street. And uh, then we met there for about a year or so. And uh, eventually uh, changed into a church, but Anita and I had duties at First Baptist Church of Heath. Uh, she was in charge of the children's choir, and uh, I was a deacon there, and so we finished up our duties. Meanwhile, the church had moved to Granville High School. They were meeting at Granville High School. And uh, so um, we started going, we finished up our duties at First Baptist Church of Heath, and then we started going to the church in Granville. When, uh, go ahead. When we, when we first met at their house, we met uh, in their family room. And I think there were five or six couples. So it was Mark and Lee Wyke. And Mark eventually became the first assistant pastor. And um, Marlon, Steve Crock, and of course, Jeff and Kathy. And there were two or three other couples. And we met on Sunday evening for, <laughs> for many months. Like Mike said, probably the better part of a year, if I'm remembering right. And it, at some point... We started meeting in the uh, old academy building downtown. Oh, yeah. Grand I forgot Island, about that. Yeah. On uh, Elm Street. <laughs> and it was, I mean, because the Bible study was really growing. at that still was a Bible study, but it was really growing. And I remember, one of the things I remember about the old academy building was um, I, I offered to do the children. So I had the children in the basement, and Kathy Klingler played the piano, and I started uh, what I called Missions and Music. I called it m ms It's Missions and Music. Mm. So each Sunday night, when we were still meeting Sunday nights, um, I would tell a mission story, and then we would, you know, keep the kids. And then upstairs, um, Jeff was preaching or teaching uh, Bible. And so that was really neat. And then the church just kept growing, and then eventually um, moved to Granville High School. Yeah. So at that time, I was the children's director and choir director at First Baptist Heath, and Mike was a, a, a deacon. And we really prayed, and we really felt like we, we needed to honor those obligations and finish, because when the church went to Sunday mornings, we were already obligated with the, um, the jobs that we had there. And so we finished uh, with that. And it was, I don't know, maybe six months or so that we were not able to attend Spring Hills because we were still at First Baptist. We'd been there about 18 years. Um, and then once those obligations were done, we started going to the high school uh, on Sunday morning and joined the Spring Hills. Yeah. Then they uh, decided to pick a site for the church. They decided to go to and build a church. And the first site they picked was off of 37 somewhere. But that somehow fell through. But it fell through for the better because the site they found, the second site, was where we are right now. And uh, one story was told where one of the church members was out mowing the ground before the church was even built. There was no building there or anything. It was just a big field. It was, uh, yeah, it was just a big field. And uh, it was a cloudy day. And as he was mowing, all of a sudden, clouds parted, and the sun shone really wow. bright right where the church is today. Whoa. Yeah. So, Isn't that cool? That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, that is so awesome. So I'm very interested in this. Um, one, music, uh, missions and music. How cool is that? That is so neat to hear that story. Now, I'm very interested in this. There must have been something very special about Spring Hills and what was happening with you and the four other families and Jeff and Kathy, because you were established at you know First Baptist of Heath. So what was it that drew you towards this new development? Were you, the, was it a, just a flat out call by God or was there something different, something more true? Explain that a you little know, bit. I, I think for me, I think it was just the feeling that the Holy Spirit was drawing us and that, you know, even though that was a short <laughs> meeting there on Vespers Hill with at Seneca Lake with Jeff, um, that I don't know, it just started that thought that God wanted him to start a church in Granville. We lived in Granville. We wanted an evangelistic church here, too. And so I think he just kept that thought on our minds, you know, that that Bible. And then once the Bible study, of course, we loved Jeff's teaching, you know, from the beginning and, and his messages. And it just kept, you know, we just kept growing and drawing closer to the Lord. Yeah. And I would agree with that because we just felt the Lord was drawing us to this area, to this church. We just felt led to join this church and, and become a part of it. Hmm. So 
This is really interesting to me. We've been talking about, obviously, the Holy Spirit series, listening to God, hearing God's voice. And I don't, I don't mean to diverge too much, but I just feel like it's without a doubt a blessing. And it was divine by God to bring this church in, into being. It's, it's, it's truthful and it's foundation and scripture. And, it, yeah. and it's just, um, it's been nothing but a blessing. Um, of course, you know, any, any church that's going to embody several thousand families is going to have its trials. But, um, my question to you is, is you've walked this life and obviously you heard God's voice call you. What is, what does that look like in your life? You know, how, what does it look like to be obedient? And what is like hearing God's voice? How does that, how does that show itself to you in your life? I think just knowing the importance of God and just, I mean, from the time I was a really little girl, I felt like God was calling me um, to him. When I was about five years old, it was the first time I sang in church and I sang away in the manger in the, in the last verse of that song, be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask you to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and take us to heaven to live with you there. I just always remember that and I never forgot. I, I really feel like that's where God put the calling. So then when I met Jeff, God just kept reminding us that we we were going to uh, First Baptist Heath, but we really wanted more. We wanted to keep growing. We wanted what the messages that Jeff was preaching really spoke to, or teaching Bible study really was, was helping us to grow spiritually. And um, the Holy Spirit, I feel like, was just working in our life to not, you know, we just didn't want to lay that down. We wanted to keep moving closer and closer to the Lord. Hmm. One of the things that I really appreciate about the both of you and my you know, journey of getting to know you all is that you have a presence about you that feels incredibly inviting. I can, when I, I remember the first time I met you, there was a sense of strength, yet, um, I don't know, there was a welcomeness and I, that I think only comes from someone who is being obedient to God and is also seeking growth. And I think that one of the struggles in our Christian world today is that we are not fully present to the entire gospel. And the entire gospel is an invitation for us to be humble and to sit below the beautiful throne of Christ and, and ask every day with a re repentful and joyful heart, how can I become more like you? What is, what does that look like? If you could give any advice to anyone today, you know, in our world, it's kind of crazy. There's a lot of distractions. Mm -hmm. Um, what did it take for you in your journey to get to that posture of heart? Because I, to be honest with you, not, not every Christian I meet is, has that type yeah. of humble heart that seeks growth. Even at, at this stage of life, this is, this is the great joy to come across someone who has lived life and is still seeking growth like you are today, because that's what I sensed with the open mm -hmm. heart from the both of you. Well, one thing I would say, you know, to make Christ, the Lord God, the center of your life, um, to ask him for guidance and direction every day before you even start your day. Uh, I didn't always do this, but I, I try to now. And, to, and I read scripture every day. And I would advise people to, you know, if people think you can't, they don't have time for scriptures, but, but if you, you read a few verses a day, if you do that every day, eventually you'll read the whole Bible. And uh, I just started doing that. And... Uh, Leaning toward the Lord or anything that come up, if I'm feeling anxious or anxiety about something, I just say out loud, Lord, give me your peace. Give me your peace. And it seems to settle me. And But, uh, but to lean on the Lord every day for his guidance and direction. There's many times that he's answered my prayer. Even I could tell you stories where... Uh, that prayer has been answered, and it just gave me a feeling of uh, tingling all over, you know, it, the idea that the, the prayer was answered in an almost impossible way. And uh, one, one of the things was we were, <clears throat> another person and I were working on a door in back of the church, 
and we were trying to remove this last screw, and we were trying hard. We were using tools. We were turning it, and uh, it, this one, the last screw, didn't seem to want to come out. So he went to get another bigger tool, and I sat down, and I just the thought came to me to pray about it. And I did. And after I prayed about it, I felt the urge to get up and try it. For some reason, I don't even know why. I tried it, and not only the screw come out, it came out so easy. Yeah. It was unreal. And it just gave me chills. But the Lord answered that prayer. And we could have drilled that screw out and everything like that. But the Lord did it to give me confidence, to build up my uh, faith and strength in Him. Mm. Yeah, that speaks to your need where you said basically at the beginning of your days, yeah. you you choose God, you and choose Scripture. And there were a lot of stories like that that's happened to me that it just gave me tingling feeling all over, you know, that the, mm. I could just feel the Spirit mm. of God. And I've never felt that until we started coming to this church. You know. Oh, wow. That's impressive. So that... There you go. That we're now we're tapping into one of the very special elements that made this church yeah. special, is that there was an element of the spirit um, yeah. being magnified and in, in, spiritual growth and just knowing, you know, that God can be real in your life. You know, he'd gone to church for twenty years, but he he just really felt like he was um, drawn closer to God to be more what God wanted him to be. Uh, not just going to church every Sunday, but really wanting to grow spiritually. And he has grown. We so, both have grown spiritually. That's an interesting <laughs> question. I am, I'm interested now. So when you started your journey with Spring Hills, mm -hmm. how did that impact your marriage? It certainly helped, you know, just being faithful to, I mean, we'd been going to church, but I think with just going to Spring Hills, we made friends with different people and just being under Jeff's um, tutelage, under his ministry and, um, he and Kathy, I think, were just instrumental in many people's life. The different Bible studies, the different messages that Jeff preached. Um, you know, for me, I always try to think, I just if I could take away one thing, every message, I learned that years ago, and, and make some change in my life, that I would grow. And I feel like that is how God has grown me over the years. And just whatever that message is about, if it's about hope, if it's about the Holy Spirit, if it's about trusting God, whatever that is, each Sunday, I want to learn one thing and apply it and change. And that, I think, has helped me to change and grow as a Christian. Mm. Well, I think what I like about that is that if you are a younger listener and you're hearing this, uh, which, by the way, is uh, our podcast is actually shown analytically that our numbers indicate that over 30% of our audience is 27 years and younger, cool. which is very exciting because this yeah. is an opportunity for you if you're younger and you're just wanting to look for ways to grow. Because oftentimes we are looking, we're living in an instant gratification society. We want instant results. People come out of college and they want to own a million dollar home right away. And they don't realize that building faith, forging the soul, and becoming who God called you to be is a brick by brick process. And what you just shared with me, Anita, yeah. is don't be concerned about the end game. Be concerned with simply living in the day and give yourself a small goal. What's the one thing I can learn coming away from this upcoming Sunday service? Yeah, I think that just that scripture, uh, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Not he might or maybe he will. No, he will. But you know, he expects us to do our part. He won't do our part. So my part is to pray and to study God's word and, and to be obedient. You know, there's a scripture that says, you know, obedience equals blessing. So when you're obedient to what God calls you to, um, he, he blesses you. And I think that is just so important. And I think it's so important for all of us, but young people maybe especially, to know that um, Satan wants to deceive and he wants to steal our, our foundation, our joy, anything, faith. But, you know, lack of faith or uh, sin, it, it starts small. It doesn't start huge. It's that little lack of faith, that little lack of doubt that draws us away from God and gets us going in the wrong direction. But it also, a little faith, a little obedience, a little following what you've heard on Scripture also takes you the right direction. Mm. 
So it sounds like to me that the battlefield of that we wage on um, on behalf of God is one in inches by and it's played by both the enemy and by our savior Daily. yeah i think one thing um when i think the holy spirit was working mightily with jeff and kathy uh, when they came from being missionaries and then they moved to this area how they got their house uh how it started how jeff had a the vision of starting an evangelistic church and it just seemed to fall into place, and people in this area it just seemed like they were drawn to it. They were just starving for an evangelistic church, and uh, it has. They have both been a blessing to our church, and their family has been a blessing, and still is today. Their family has still been a blessing today. So the whole story, I mean, it's it's, it's amazing how this church started. In this area, I think Pastor Tom was in ninth grade um, when the Bible study started in his mom and dad's family room. So hmm. that's awesome. One of the things that I think I'm hearing from you is, and I'm, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that one of the things that made this church powerful and began its pretty fast growth. There was a ten year period where I mean it shot through the roof was its focus on evangelism. Was it like that, not to say anything negative, but was the passion as great at the previous church that you attended? They had a lot of different pastors. I mean, I think at times it was, but I I don't know that it was always that way. Mm -hmm. It was easy to kind of just go to church Mm -hmm. and not be involved, but... um, because one of the things that I'm thinking about as I'm hearing your story, which is just so beautiful, is everything that we're trying to do today, being in this room, a podcast that's titled You Matter, is that when a church is built on evangelism, the Great Commission, mm-hmm. Matthew 28, what you're doing is, is, is those that are a part of the body are given a purpose and you are a part of something. And that's one of the things that's really important. We're thinking about um, there's just this incredible uh, drop off in membership at churches now. And people are just retracting for several different reasons. One, Mm. there's some fear and a lack of, uh, uh, I guess, true security and safety that people have. Can they trust a big organization? You know, there's a lot of misinformation out there in the world now today. But one of the things that I am wondering is, is, if I'm to be a part of something, to be a member, quote unquote, am I really feeling like I'm a partner? And this church has kind of been an anomaly in the sense that while other churches are struggling, we're not experiencing that much because we actually are conveying the message that you are a part of something special. We need you. You matter. You are our partner as much as you are a member. We can call it membership. But boy, oh boy, you are our partner and we're doing this together. And it seems like maybe that was a part of the intangible thing that made this church special in the beginning. I would agree. I think Pastor Jeff had a way of making you feel welcome and important every day. Whenever you saw him, he's always greeting you and laughing, a joke or what. And Tom has that same. Um, He makes you feel like when you're talking to him, you're the only person that really matters. He's not like looking around to see who he's going to talk to next. And I think they both had that. And Kathy has that as well, where they just make you feel valued. And I think for them, that's a gift that God has given to them, that, um, that they are just so loving and welcoming. And, and there he started, God started the ministry. You know, he gave Jeff the vision. He gave him the want to. You knew every time you talked to him. He knew God was drawing him to start this church, and he did, and it's been successful. And, um, you know, for me personally, um, just the ministry of Sunshine School wasn't something, it's something that I'm involved with from the very beginning. It's been 32 years, but I wasn't looking to start a ministry. God brought me that ministry. I was a preschool teacher, but I had never been to college. And uh, Pastor Jeff and Kathy and Mark and Lee Wyke, some of the other uh, parents at that time wanted me. I had started Sunshine School at my home, 
and they wanted me to bring it here when we moved into this building. I believe it was in 1992. And um, I agreed. I'd never been to college, so I had to go to college to, to be able to run a preschool. And I started college um, at the same year that I started Sunshine School here. And um, it was just, I, I, I worked five years to get a degree in early childhood education administration. And at the same time, I was teaching here at the, and these rooms up here were actually the preschool. My mm. classroom was where the cafe is. And these rooms were uh, the three-year-old classes. And then eventually, where Tevis's office, it, Pastor Tevis's office is, was my office. Uh, I didn't always have an office, but after about four or five years, the preschool was growing so fast. Um, they gave me, they gave me an, an office there. And it was just neat because God just met the needs of Sunshine School from the very beginning. I would need something. And it'd be on my doorstep or be here at the church when I got here. And I remember one year, um, it was a week before Sunshine School was supposed to start. And I got a call from a teacher uh, and she said oh, what she wasn't going to come back, that she'd had some family things and she'd been thinking about it, but she'd finally decided that she wasn't going to come back. And I'm like, Lisa, how am I going to get a teacher in one week? I've already got your class filled and, you know. But anyway, I just sat in the yard and I prayed about it. And the very next morning, I came into the building and Kathy Pound came right over to me and she said, do you need a teacher? And I'm like, yes, I do. And just that quickly, God, uh, she gave me the name it was Leslie Safura, And she came and she taught a year and just but many, many stories like that where we would have a need and we would pray and God answered the needs over and over again yeah. at Sunshine School. Wow. <clears throat> What I'm hearing you say is that this place was filled with the Holy Spirit and calling. Yeah. And then also, um, it required your faith. And every time you were at a place where it was the 11th hour, mm -hmm. Isaiah 58, 11, where God guides, he provides. Right. But he just, had to take you to the 11th hour sometimes. Right, yeah. just the, the question and then your obedience, you know, just knowing I knew this was God's calling. I didn't decide to start a preschool. That was I hadn't. I was never my desire. It, God brought that ministry, and I think it's so neat for the church. I think one reason the church wanted it at the time it started was because the church was still fairly small, and um, we would bring in these young families, and uh, and still, you know, even now, I think I think they had about 150 preschool children last year here. So. The preschool is bringing these young families into the building five days a week, and every child is hearing a Bible story every day, and they're memorizing mm -hmm. scripture. I remember one time going into the classroom, and this little boy came over, and he said, Miss Anita, you want to hear Psalm 100? And he just repeated. He was only four years old, but he oh. repeated the 100th Psalm. I mean, how many of us can repeat the 100th Psalm? Not many. And, you know, and so I think... You know, our church is such a mission-minded church, and, you know, the pastors and members have gone all around the world um, sharing Christ. But we're also in this building, Sunshine School, every day preaching, teaching children on the floor, teaching them that Jesus loves them. He's got a plan for them. Yeah, and many of the, the children's parents, many of them came to join the church through Sunshine School. Mm -hmm other parents and some of them accepted a lot of them accepted the lord well and that's one of the things that we've learned is that one if you have not checked out sunshine school you have got to check out sunshine school it is an amazing school and it is just like lenita said it's full of love it's full of uh, just a warm welcome environment and guess what folks it's actually full of people that are so attracted to it that they are they have not yet met Christ and some of them. I'm not sure what the percentage is, but it could be close to about 50% yeah. of those attending the church uh, attending the Sunshine School are actually have an opportunity for us in this building to share the word of God and we're doing that with their children which is a huge impact. And I think um, we started chapel many years ago and that I really felt like that was God gave me the idea. We were trying Pastor Jeff and I trying to figure out you know, how to connect Sunshine School and the church ministry with these families that were coming. And um, so we started having chapel once a month. And 
many of these families, and we still do that, many of these families come for this devotion time and their children sing the songs and the children say the Bible verses that they're learning for these parents. But many of these parents, maybe 75% of them, they don't have a church. So when they come and they, one of our pastors comes in and gives a, a devotion and gives scripture, that's their church for that week and, or that month. And so, I mean, it's just, I feel like God, his word promises, if we give his word out, he'll bless it. And I think he truly has blessed it with Sunshine Preschool for many years. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> one of the things that our church uh, has a focus of and it's our mantra, is that we are building generations for Jesus Christ. Love, live, and lead like Jesus Christ. Right. You've modeled that. Your daughter, Suzanne, is now the head of the Sunshine School. Right. And it that is right along with what we're after here in this podcast episode is, is how important is it to, one, um, get a hold of the truth of the full gospel, the you know the full invitation of Jesus Christ, and then what does it look like to pass it down from one generation to the next so that we are building a legacy for the kingdom of God and expanding his kingdom. Can you tell me, um, because I can share with you, from my opinion, um, just how wonderful Suz Suzanne is. She is kind. She is sweet. It does not surprise me that she comes from the two of you. Oh, thank you. Um, what was that like, you know, giving that just this is almost from a for any parent out there that's trying to raise their children in this crazy world today. Mm -hmm. um, you you two have a special gift and 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 it's in your child uh, what what did that look like giving this passion to her um Suzanne is, is such a blessing she and Cindy uh, are the co-administrators at Sunshine School now and they are doing a great job and it's just such, such a blessing for me as a mom to see that my daughter has has followed um, in my footsteps, so to speak, but that she has her own relationship with Christ and she's leading her children, her own two boys to know Christ and to live for Christ and to, to put Christ first in your home and in your family. I think it's so important that parents value themselves. So much of what we see in society now is parents giving everything to children, giving them and, and making the children the focal point of their family. And then when the children grow up then and go away, then they don't value the parents like they should because it's always been all about them. So I think it's so important for our, our children to understand, or our, our parent, young parents to understand, to make sure they have a date night, make sure their children know mm. that God is important to them, that they have a family time, family prayer time, pray together. Mm. and. That's beautiful. One of the things that is a real, really kind of an epidemic in our society today is fatherlessness. And um, I came across a story about a nun who did prison ministry. And uh, she visited a ministry on Mother's Day and offered men to write cards to their mothers. And she thought, well, we'll just give it a try and we'll see what the response is. There was so many responses that they ran out of cards. Father's Day came around and she's like, okay, well, I'm contacting Hallmark and I'm going to order as many cards as possible so that these, you know, these inmates <clears throat> can have as many cards as they need to, to write to their fathers. Not a single inmate requested a card for their father. Wow. Wow. Now. That is something that I would like to turn towards you because Mike, I, I just, I don't know. I respect you so much. I just recently lost my grandfather who uh, held such a powerful place in my life. And I don't know, maybe it's just the Holy Spirit and a blessing from God, but it's in a way, every time I see you on Sunday, you bless me. And I just feel so, um, I feel the father love, the father heart of God from you. And I guess I was just wondering what did it look like uh, for you to just pour into your children as a well, father? I thank you for the, your words. But yes, I, I've always tried to maintain a relationship with our daughters and our son and uh, even our grandkids. Uh, I used to, I mean, we did things together. I used to play with them together when they were young. And... Uh, and with our grandkids, you know, we attend our ball games and, and we get together and have fellowship. And, and I, tell, I try to tell them stories of our ancestry, things that 
my grandfather did, and my dad told me about my my father and my grandfather, or told me about his his father, my grandfather, and uh, family stories. I think it's important to have a. It's important in the Bible. There's a lot of about ancestry in the Bible, but children need to to know that they're loved, their fathers loved them, to do special things with them, and and just things with them. And um, I've I've always enjoyed it. I mean, I always enjoyed uh, when I've worked outside. You know, our kids have worked outside with me. You know, and we played outside, and as we were growing up, and we always tried to maintain a close relationship. And then also, at the same time, Anita and I have kept a close relationship with each other and did things together. We apologize for the abrupt ending to today's podcast episode with Mike and Anita Jones. We can assure you that we were in our final remaining minutes of the episode before we experienced technical difficulties. As a result, I will lead us out in prayer today and offer you an invitation to one minute of silence to choose to have margin in your life, to allow for the Holy Spirit to speak within you, and remember that it is the slow and steady process that wins the race, and the kingdom of God is built one brick at a time. Thank you so much for joining us on today's Ministry Spotlight episode. We hope that learning more about our leaders' hearts and our origin story of our church has blessed you and encouraged you in your walk with Christ. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. And please remember that more important than anything else, you are welcome here, you are loved, and you matter. Father God in heaven, Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for Mike and Anita Jones, the example that they have set before us, uncovering the incredible story that did become our church here at Spring Hills. We thank you and we ask for your blessings over their entire family, over their children and over their children's children. We thank you for their love. We also thank you that they are celebrating 50 years of marriage coming up very soon. What a great example that you have set before us. May we please, Lord, all find opportunities to seek out Paul-like figures in our life that can bestow wisdom upon us, helping us to recover the beauty of the gospel today. We love you, Jesus. We choose you in our hearts. We thank you for this time, and we choose this next minute to be in silence, to allow your heart to speak back to us. Thank you.